Hey everybody, this is Mr. Castle and it's good to see you guys. Uh, welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is I'm kind of going to walk you through uh, a PowerPoint presentation that we usually do when we are together in front of the uh, big screen in our theater room, which is here at the Bechtel. But since we can't be together, I wanted to walk you guys through it uh, from my laptop. So we're going to kind of talk about what the class is like. We're going to talk about what we do in every class, what you're going to learn, what kind of software we're going to use. And the software we'll jump into later in another video. So if that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it later. Right now, I just want to give you an overview of the class. So uh, we got some pictures here uh, of our recording studio. You can see up there in the uh, kind of top middle. Um, over on the top right, you can see that picture is us doing a live broadcast. We have a television studio here, and you will learn the ins and outs of that. Um, also, there's some short film stuff on here from our competitions. You can see us down at South by Southwest and at some other film festivals. Um, and then there is a uh, really cool picture of us miking a drum set. So in the audio class, you're going to learn all kinds of things about music recording. Um, so let's go over all the different stuff. So first of all, are you in the right place? This class is an overview. You guys are going to be in audio, audio video production one, and that is an overview of our industry. A little bit of audio, a little more video in the beginning. And when I say beginning, I mean your first year of this class. So what do we do? Well, we're going to learn how to shoot, edit, script, uh, color correct, how to do live TV. We're going to do short films. We're going to do a ton of editing. You're going to get really good as an editor. Um, on the audio side, you're going to learn how to record. You're going to learn how to mix a little bit. When I say mix, what I mean is when you are creating a song, we'll get more into this. How do you balance out all the levels and the instruments? Um, this class is going to cover a little bit of news, not too much. Usually we'll do a live news broadcast for a couple weeks. Um, some of you may have seen the Bechtel basement. That's the show we produce in the second year of class. So we have a big set. I'm actually in the studio right now, and you can maybe look over there and see that we have the set set up over there. And um, that's a second year thing, but we're going to show you how it works in the first year. But if you get to the second year, that means you'll be a crew member on the Bechtel Basement, uh, whether you're the director, the cameraman, the sound person, the graphics, um, the host, could be anything. So uh, you may have seen that before on YouTube. The episodes are up on our YouTube page. And uh, so, yeah, let's jump into it. Let's jump into Oh, let me go back one. This slide says, am I in the right place? Uh, I say all that stuff about the class because I want to give you guys an overview of what we really do here. Some people come to this class and they say, well, I'm a singer and I like to make music, but I'm not really a behind the audio desk type of a person. This might not be the place for you because this class is about being behind the camera and behind the audio recording desk. And we're going to teach you how to be the engineer who hooks up the microphones uh, runs it into the recording studio, big rack of gear, how that whole rack of gear works, how you record, how you edit, how you mix. Um, as far as video, you're going to be the person who writes scripts, directs, edits, not so much the actor or the singer. Um, also, if you are not sure that this is for you, um, just give us a shout and say, you know, I'm kind of interested in this. Are we going to cover that? Some people say, I'm an animator. I want to be an animator. Well, we don't do a ton of animation. I will say that if you want to be an animator, this is a good class to learn your basics of shot composition, uh, storyboarding, lots of things that go into animation. Um, and if you want to be a beat maker or a DJ, um, that's fine. Miss Lofton and myself are actually both uh, DJs, and that's a thing we're passionate about, but it's not something we get to do every day in class. Um, unless it will be one day. Uh, but that maybe would be something that we focus on a little bit, but I'm still going to make you learn how to shoot a video. Now, if you're like, ah, I like one, but I don't like the other, what I have to say is the two go hand in hand as far as audio and video together. You cannot have a video if you're a director or you are a film person. You cannot have a video with bad audio because then you have nothing. You just have an image. Uh, if you are an audio person, and you want to work in a recording studio, you might not get a job straight out of high school working in a recording studio, but you can buy yourself a boom mic and a portable mixer and go get paid upwards of $1,000 a day if you're good to work on short films or feature length films in this area. So just because you want to be a record producer, I'm still going to make you learn 
how to do sound for film because while you're pursuing your dream to be a record producer, you can go get paid and pay your bills with the things that we're going to teach you here. So they do go hand in hand. And if you're still confused, give me an email or a call. We'll talk about whether or not you are in the right place. What we don't want is for you to take the class and hate everything you do. The Bechtel is an amazing place with a class for almost everybody. So if you got put in this class or you signed up for this class and you're thinking, eh, I don't know, just call me and it happens every year. We figure out what you are most interested in. And I guarantee you there's a class here where you can enjoy your entire year and not say, well, I like music. I took Mr. Castle's class and all he talked about was microphones. I don't really care about microphones. I just like to listen to music. You're going to have a boring year. You're not going to be into it. We want you to be passionate about what you're doing. So um, give me a shout uh, or talk to your counselor, and we're open to talk to anybody about anything. So that being said, make sure you're in the right place. If you're not, let us know, and let's move on. Who are we? Uh, I am with you right now. I am Mr. Castle, and I teach uh, audio video production, and I teach advanced audio production a little bit this year. Miss Lofton is going to be your advanced audio production teacher, and I'm going to be teaching advanced video. So those of you who uh, maybe had met Mr. Upchurch before, um, he is gone, and we, we have replaced him with Mrs. Lofton, who is fantastic. She comes from industry. She was a DJ on 97.9 The Beat. She knows her stuff. Uh, she's an audio person, so she's actually going to be handling advanced audio this year. I might pop in and do some lessons that were fun last year when I taught it, um, but I'm going to be teaching advanced video, and this slide is wrong. I meant to correct it. It actually says that I am teaching advanced audio, and Ms. Lofton is teaching advanced video. Uh, I did not fix this slide, so I apologize. Ms. Lofton is going to be teaching advanced video production. I'm sorry, uh, audio video production. I will be the advanced video teacher. Tell you what. Let's just fix it right now. Let's just fix all this. And now you can look at it and say everything is correct. All right, now here we go. Okay, so Trevor Castle, he's going to teach you audio video production and advanced video production. So I'll be doing Bechtel Basement this year, um, and I'll be popping over to audio to do some cool audio lessons. Miss Lawson will come back uh, to audio video when we do a little switch, and we're just going to be bouncing back and forth each year, uh, each uh, week or six weeks or whenever. Um, so Miss Lawson will be teaching audio video production, and these are the same first year classes. So there's uh, at, at your two, three block and your four, five block. And so those are two classes connected to each other. Um, I'll be teaching one, and Miss Lofton will be teaching one. It's the same material. So all you first year guys, you're going to be with us in the mornings, whether you're in two, three, or four, five, and we'll be doing the same stuff. Um, and then she'll be doing advanced audio. That was confusing. So how does your track look if you really want to stay in this department for a while? Well, you can do audio video production one. And if you do a great job and you're really into this and you have good grades and you've shown us that you're a student who cares about this, we're happy to have you in our advanced class. And our advanced class is in the afternoon. So let's say that you really love audio. Well, you can take advanced audio production and we'll talk about what that class is. Or in your second year, you can do advanced video production. So there's kind of a split in the second year for video or audio. And that helps people figure out, um, you know, all right, well, I want to do a full year in audio for sure. Um, but what if I have a third year? Well, we recommend that you go take the other advanced class. We used to have some kind of a student intern, uh, practicum class, which was where you would have one thing that you focused on, but we don't have that anymore. So the reason why we recommend you take the other class is also because these two, um, audio and video go so much hand in hand that before our, our job is to get you employable to make sure you are uh, ready to go work in the audio video industry. If I send you out the door to go fly and you only know audio, that means you're going to miss out on all the video jobs and vice versa. If you only know video, you're going to get a job offer to run sound and you're going to be like, I don't really do sound. I just do video. But if you know both, you can make great money while working super cool hours. Uh, you may work a long day, but you may have the rest of the week off. And then you can edit the video in your spare time and not have to go work at McDonald's and uh, get paid up to 50 bucks an hour for your work if you're good. Um, but I want you to know both when you leave. So we do recommend that if you complete your second year in one advanced class, if you want to come back, you can take the other advanced class. Okay, so advanced audio production. What do we learn if you take what we call audio two? Um, so on the top left, you can see there's me uh, miking up a drum kit with some of my kiddos. 
And uh, this is me teaching them how to mic a drum set for recording. We do every instrument. We talk about um, the whole recording process from start to finish. On the right, top right, you can see that on that day, we all brought in some of our DJ uh, gear. There's a couple of DJ boards there, a couple mixers, and we were goofing around in the uh, tractor. You can see tractors a DJ software that's up on that computer right there. Um, and that uh, mixing board there, that's our recording studio. So usually it's the mixing board and the MIDI controller and uh, those two screens, and that's where we do all of our mixing. That's where we do all of our editing for any music that we record. Uh, and there's a couple of the pictures of some other classes. Advanced video production, you can see on the top left, that is the set of the Bechtel Basement. Bechtel Basement is a talk show um, that we shoot, edit, script, write, and produce here in the studio of the Bechtel. Um, and we'll have a host, we'll have guests, we'll have segments, sketch comedy, commercials, all kinds of different things that we do. Um, this is in the advanced video class. So our goal here is to take your video production knowledge from um what's pretty good to really really good and have you be in a special effects wizard or a uh sound person or a writer or whatever you want whatever you're passionate about we're going to help you focus on that get really really good at that so a little bit about our program and what we do when we go out as a program and compete in the world. Some of you may have heard of uh, competitions like SkillsUSA or TSA. We really like to compete in film festivals. And here's why. Um, if you get into a film festival, if you shoot a short film, and it can be a 30 second long film, the really neat thing about that is you can take your film and you can submit it to festivals all over the country, whether there's an entry fee or not. If there's an entry fee, we'll help you figure out how to get that paid. Um, let's say it's $20, right? So. You will enter your film into a film festival that's being held maybe during COVID. They're going to uh, hold some of these online. Uh, but let's say that in a regular year, they were going to be something you could attend. You don't have to attend a film festival to be accepted. So if you send your film to a small film festival in Ohio and you get accepted, you don't have to go. Um, probably be very expensive and time consuming to go. Um, but your film will get... But you can see these little leaves on the left and right of these film festival um, logos are called laurels. And you get to put that on your poster, on your website, on your Twitter. You are, your film was an official selection of, let's say, the South by Southwest Film Festival. Um, this also goes on your resume and in your demo reel. And these are the things you're going to take and then go use to get a job. So over, from 2006, over the course of, a uh, long time. We've had 24 films get accepted into South by Southwest. We've had two in first place. Um, we have had 17 other nationwide festivals that have accepted our films. Starting in 2014, we really started branching out to other film festivals. So uh, who knows if South by Southwest is even going to happen this year. If they, if it does happen and you are accepted, um, you know, if things work out and we're able to go down, we would love to take you down to these festivals. There's uh, one down in Bryan, Texas, and there's a couple here in Dallas, Fort Worth, and we would go attend and see your film screen and your parents and everybody can come and we'll watch the premiere and there's an award show. Uh, so we really like to have a presence in the film festival circuit um, from this department because we're really good at what we do and we like to show it off and we want to get you guys those laurels so that you can use them to advertise yourself as you go out into the future being accepted into a film festival a big one like south by southwest is a really cool thing for a high school kid um building a reel a reel is like a uh, demo reel is a collection of your best work you put it up on youtube and then when someone says hey i'd like to hire this kid you're gonna say go look at my demo reel and stuff like this is really cool for that so what's a typical class like? Um, you're going to come to class, and first of all, this is not a typical year, nor is it a typical time. Things are very strange right now, and we're going to do our best to keep up. But if I was to give you a description of a normal day in my classroom, or Mr. Uh, Mr. Upchurch, or now Ms. Lofton's classroom, students will come in. Uh, we'll probably have something up on the board for you to do, whether that is a daily Canvas assignment, something really quick. Uh, you might log in, take a quiz. And that's just kind of something you do while everybody's coming and getting situated. When we start class, uh, me or Mrs. Lofton is probably going to talk to you for 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes if we're covering some new material. May talk to you for two minutes. 
Um, depending on what we're covering, because it might be something we're still working on from the day before. In that case, I wouldn't need to talk to you guys very much um, as far as like lecturing you on material. So we'll go over some new concepts or whatever we're doing. And in the rest of the class, which is upwards of an hour and 10 minutes left after I'm done talking or more, uh, that's your work time. So that's when you are hands on camera in your hand, microphone in your hand, sitting down in front of your computer, editing, importing footage, exporting footage, coloring, um, not coloring, coloring your film. Um, it's a hands on class. And that's what's fun about it. Now, this is a weird time. You can't be here to touch a lot of our cameras. And when you are here, if we do end up having everybody here, um, we're probably going to still have to be keeping our distance. Um, but the rest of that time I told you was hands-on time. That's still going to be time you're going to be working. I'm not going to talk to you for an hour and bore you to sleep. I'm going to give you something to do. I'm going to give you something to create, whether it's music or video. You will be creating for the majority of every day you are in this class. Um, and all the other details we'll cover uh, when we get to them, but that's pretty much what a day in this class is like. And then sometimes we'll have a project that's a week long. So you've told me Monday, I'm going to write my audio. Tuesday, I'm going to record all my lines. Wednesday, I'm going to edit. Thursday, I'm going to uh, color correct and uh, apply filters to my interview footage. Friday, I'm going to export and turn it in. All right, I've got your plan in front of me on paper. When you come in on Thursday, I'm going to say, hey, let's check your stuff. And as long as you're on target, you go to work right? You, you stick to that plan and we'll do projects that may take all week long. As far as this year and this time of this year, when you're home, you may have a project that you're working on at home. You'll still have some sort of daily check-in with me or Ms. Lofton to let us know where you are. Maybe show us a screen grab of your footage uh, and your progress, something like that. But you'll still be working even from home on longer projects that may take you a week to edit um, or four days to edit. So should be fun. Here's what we cover in this class, video editing and production basics. And that is everything from how a tripod works. How do you carry a tripod? How does a camera work? How do you white balance a camera? How do you get your exposure right? How do you light a scene? How do you compose a shot? That's uh, the first thing we're going to teach you is shot composition. How do I make a medium shot look good in an interview? How do I make an establishing shot of a building look uh, pretty like Wes Anderson does with, with a very wide aspect uh, ratio or how do I get a uh, square aspect ratio because I want to make it look like I shot this on a VHS tape. It's so all kinds of creative things that look really cool in the end begin with production basics. What are my shot types? How does my mic work? All that stuff. Storyboarding, um, making a shot list when you go out. So we're going to start you. You don't have to know anything before we get started in this class. We're going to get you ready and send you out. Uh, field production. So when I say video editing and production basics, you could probably uh, record yourself with your laptop like I'm doing, um, edit in some footage and call it a day. But when I say field production, that means you're going outside of whatever location you started. So in the news, field production would be you're going to take a camera, you're going to take a one of our news vans and a sound guy. You two are going to go out to the scene of whatever happened. You're going to shoot an interview. You're going to create a package. You're going to come back. And that production is something you created in the field. So that's a little different, and it's kind of a specialty because uh, there's a couple things that go into that, such as lighting in the field, uh, recording sound properly in the field. That means recording your audio and your interviews correctly, recording yourself correctly, getting the natural sound of the environment to edit in later. Um, so that's a whole big thing called field production. We're going to teach you all about it. Now, studio production is different. Studio production is it's where we are right here in the studio today. You can see there's some cameras over there, and there's our set. And behind that glass is the control room, and that's where the director sits. The director, the graphics person, the teleprompter, all those people who you might see in excuse me, movies and TV where they're saying, ready camera one, take camera one. Okay, camera two, give me a two shot. No, 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 zoom out. No, 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 fix this here. Okay, camera three, give me two shot. And it's very fast paced, and there's a person calling the shots, much like a sportscaster calling a game um, from, a, from a script they have, and our finished product is going to be a live show like Saturday Night Live or a newscast where we're airing stories and cutting back and forth between the anchors um, or talk show. It is live studio production. So it's not something like field production or video editing where you go out and shoot, come back, and put all the pieces together. We do it live. The cameras are rolling. Someone's saying, switch to this camera, switch to this camera, play a video, now come back to this camera. And that formula is how we create television. Um, in the 90s, it's how we created all of our sitcoms. And you may remember 
uh, at the beginning of watching Friends or whatever, it would say, Friends is filmed before a live studio audience. Well, that means they did the whole thing live. Their lines were memorized. They were cutting cameras back and forth. And you go all the way through your production. So that's still something that's very uh, important um, as far as our industry because it's still something that's done today. Um, then we have audio radio production. Radio is something that now Miss Lofton, she comes from radio. She was on the radio as far as uh, how long ago was it you were on the radio, Miss Lofton? Oh, she has her headphones. Uh, but Miss Lofton was a DJ on 97.9 The Beat and 94.5 and all these different stations. Um, she brings to us a lot of knowledge about the current state of radio. Now, podcasting and the internet has really made a dent in the life of radio. Um, but that's also something she's very good at. And it's also something that is a huge part of our industry today is podcasting, audio production, radio production, all kinds of things um, that you're going to learn in this class that kind of flow in the same direction. So we're not going to do a ton of what I would call old school radio education. We're going to do kind of a revised radio education, which includes podcasting, things like that. Um, and that's stuff you guys will be doing pretty fast, uh, especially in the advanced audio class. For audio production, we'll talk a little bit more about it on a different slide, but that's that's more uh, music, sound for film. We do a lot of Foley. Foley is when um, uh, there's a sound in a movie and we need to, or there's an action in a movie and we need to recreate the sound. Um, let's say we didn't pick it up or just didn't sound that good, or I want to give it that Hollywood feel. So, uh, for example, in a zombie movie, when someone gets their arm ripped off and there's a crunch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a microphone, I'm going to take some celery, and I'm going to crunch the celery into the microphone, then we're going to take that sound, overlay it in our film, gives it a really gross, nasty, crunchy effect, and that's called Foley. It's, it's creating new sounds for actions we see that sound better. So stuff like that. Um, Recording music for movies, things like that. Let's get a little bit more into it here. We're going to jump into the what we're actually going to learn. All right, here's another slide that needs to be edited that Mr. Castle didn't edit. Um, and it's that second bullet point. So it, in the very, very, very beginning of this class, we're going to start you out with your basics. We're going to start you editing, not shooting. And the reason we start you editing is because when you are shooting, I want you to know where these shots are going to end up and what you're going to do with them. If I tell you just to go out and shoot footage, but you've never edited before, then you might not know that when you are composing a shot, you want to tell your actor to stay still until you say action. Now, if you've edited before and you're trying to control uh, the story with a character walking through a shot, you might know that's a hard shot to edit if the person never stood still. And then when you say action, they begin to walk. Or you might not know to wait a few seconds before action and after cut, right? So we start you editing before we start you shooting. And instead of using Adobe Premiere, which is what you see there, you guys are going to be home um, or you're here or you're home. We don't know. So what we did is we switched to a online video editor, and it's called WeVideo. And there's going to be another video that jumps into WeVideo and talks about that. You're going to be able to edit in your web browser. I'm going to be able to give you footage through the web browser. So you're going to log in. You're going to see a project that Ms. Lofton or I gave to you, and it's going to have footage in it. And we're going to give you instructions on what to do with that footage. When you're done, you're going to export it within Wii Video, and I can check it. I can go see, see exactly what you did. Um, so Adobe Premiere is something that we may hopefully get into when everybody's back, but that's something we have here. Getting Adobe Premiere to you guys at home would be really difficult, um, and this is going to suffice as a Band-Aid. Wii Video is going to be really good. And when you get back here, we'll jump into Adobe Premiere. A lot of you guys may have heard of it before. It's Adobe's video editing software and it's really great and we're going to get you a certification in that um, but you do need to be here with us to do that so uh there's some other stuff we can talk about premiere you may be able to use it at home this year i'm not really sure it's like if you have your own computer that can run it um, but that's a different issue so we'll figure that out when we get there editing for genre what does that mean well it means if it's a horror movie and you're going to have someone uh, jump out and scare somebody i want to build that tension up with my edits if it's a romantic comedy, I don't want fast action edits. So you're going to learn how to create tension and feeling and atmosphere with your edits. Understanding the production means understanding the very start, if it's an idea, and you're sitting down at a production meeting, we're going to show you how to, how to give that life, how to get funding, how to pitch it, how to do a storyboard, how to do location scouting, how to set a shooting schedule, how to come back with your dailies, edit them, color them, mix the sound, send it off for your final audio mix, get it back, 
submit it to a festival, you're a short filmmaker, right? There you go. Um, and all kinds of other things that go into that. And then preparing for our Adobe certification is a big deal. We're going to try our best this year to get you guys Adobe certified. Who knows what the year is going to be like, but um, our goal is to get you a certification, which means you'll take a test. Uh, it's like a virtual machine that runs Adobe Premiere, and it's a user-certified um, test. If you pass, which most people do, you get a couple tries. You are an Adobe Premiere certified user, and that goes on your resume, on your demo reel, on your website. It's a really cool thing. Field production. We're going to send you out with cameras. You're going to operate those cameras. You're going to learn how to beautifully compose your images. You're going to expose your shot properly. When you shoot video with your iPhone, it does everything for you automatically. How much light is coming in, how fast the shutter needs to move. Um, we're going to show you how to do those things manually so you can create more cinematic, beautiful footage. Storyboarding and pre-production. How do I get this idea out of my head onto paper and then onto video? Never go straight from your mind to a camera without drawing this thing out. What do you, what is that shot going to actually look like to me of the tree and the sunset? I want to draw it. I might paint it. I want to see it. Then I'll go shoot it. Um, and we'll go, we'll have you guys storyboard whole short films. It's a lot of paper, but it works to your advantage. And it's something that we do in the industry. Um, how to produce a shoot. What if you're a producer? What if you're in charge of uh, let's say you're like, I don't know, I don't really have a creative eye. I don't like to act, but I like to oversee projects and put puzzle pieces together and solve problems. You might be a movie producer. So you might be someone who's over the entire production. And um, that's a really cool job. You can make a lot of money. And we're going to show you how to do that. And then careers in production, there's so many. We'll talk about all of them. We'll have a whole other video about careers and audio, careers and video. And we'll teach you everything you need to know. Studio production. Uh, you're going to produce live shoots. You're going to be in the live shoots maybe because we do need a host for the Bechtel Basement. And when we do news, we're going to have you guys do every position. You're going to rotate. So you'll be the host. Then you'll be the cameraman. Then you'll be the director. Then you'll be the sound guy. Then you'll be the graphics person. Then you'll be the floor manager. Then you'll be the host again. And you'll circle all around. Um, I'll show you how to create a performance for broadcast. Live streaming is a huge thing these days. We live stream our Bechtel Basement episodes. Uh, so we'll show you how all of that works. Okay, audio slash radio production. So your first year, you're not going to be doing a ton of audio because there's a lot of video we need to cover. But you will be doing some. Now, second year, we're going to go way deep into microphones, mixing, how to mix a drum and bass song versus a trap song versus a metal song. What do you do with the bass in all of these genres? What do you do with the drums in all of these genres? How do you compress a snare drum? How do you do parallel compression? All of this stuff. We dump, jump way, way, way deep into that. But in your first year, you're going to learn different microphone types, how they work, what we use them for, um, and that's for film and music. Um, the science and production of sound, something that uh, Ms. Lofton and myself are both very experienced and passionate about is how does sound even work? What do we do? How do we capture it? How do we manipulate it? How do we process it? Um, are there places in the universe where sound doesn't exist? I mean, we get deep into the world of sound and audio and acoustics. Understanding the audio production process means uh, when you leave here, you will be comfortable walking into a studio or a uh, recording studio or a video studio, and you'll have the knowledge to capture music, voice, dialogue, whatever, process it, clean it up, give it the uh, pop that it needs, and get it out to whoever's going to pay you in the proper format, sounding better than anyone else's audio. Um, and then mixing and processing sound. So if you want to be a recording engineer, and you want to learn how to mix a song. And I'm not talking about a song that you made um, on your iPhone. I'm happy that you're making songs on your iPhone, but let's say you made a song, a beat on your iPhone, and it's got a bass line, six drum tracks, four other tracks, right? You want to mix them all together and make it sound good. I'm going to give you songs that have upwards of 100 tracks. And you're going to go through, and you're going to make a blend of those 100 different microphone signals into a song that sounds as polished as you would hear on the radio and it's a art and it's a process and it's really cool and it's a lot of fun and that's more of an audio two thing but we'll do a little bit of it in first year uh, a little bit more about audio so you'll learn about effects and processing and all that stuff we use logic in this classroom uh, apple's logic is a fantastic um daw 
And some people who have done the research or who already do audio say, why don't you use Pro Tools? Well, I believe Logic is a better platform to learn on, especially when you have a class um, that you uh, that you're. So I can put Logic on every computer. There's our classroom. There's Miss Lofton. She's doing her work. Every computer in this classroom I can install Logic on. Um, Pro Tools is a little more expensive to get a Pro Tools license. Pro Tools is what you'll see in most upscale studios because it's been around for so long. But Logic has really made a push, and it is something that I can teach you all the techniques on. You can learn everything about compression and EQing in Logic. Those techniques are just techniques. They apply to any software. So you can learn Pro Tools when you graduate. And as long as you know how to run a compressor, the compressor in Pro Tools is going to have the same knobs and dials as the compressor in Logic. You just need to know what that stuff means. So I like Logic. It's very user-friendly. The interface is very good for teenagers learning. Um, I think it's great. I use it. I like it a lot. Um, and I think you will too. So we'll be doing Logic uh, for our sound design things. We use Adobe Audition, which is also a fantastic um, non-musical sound editor, but it is a powerful sound editor. Logic is a digital audio workstation, which means it's kind of meant for making music. Um, things like that. You can do podcasts in it. Now, we may also be, um, I think we, and today, Ms. Lofton and I were looking at this. There are a couple options out there for online DAWs, and that means I can't get you Logic at home. It's not going to work on your Chromebook. If you don't have a Mac, it's a Mac product, so it's not going to work on a PC. But there is, there's a couple things out there that are very similar and that work on your Chromebook uh, as DAWs. And so we're exploring that right now. And by the end of this week, we'll have an answer for you on what we'll be using. And that's probably going to be mostly for people in audio too. Um, but you first year guys, we want you to be able to mix and do these same things that we usually do here with logic. So we should have a couple answers for that. All right. What do you need to bring every single day to this class? Take a guess. Pencil, pen, notebook, money, animals. A lot of other classes require you to bring a lot of things. We only ask you to bring one thing, one thing, one thing for headphones. And this is because, A, I don't want to hear you edit the same dialogue over and over and over and over and over and over and over again while 24 other people in class do the same thing. B, I don't know if I said A or 1, but we're on the second bullet point. Uh, 2B. Sound is on a spectrum, low to high frequency, right? So the microphone on your cell phone, the microphone on your laptop, the microphone on these iMacs that we have are not speakers. Um, I said microphone, I meant speakers. The speakers on these are not good at representing low frequency to high frequency. That's why your cell phone doesn't hit like a subwoofer, right? So you need to have something replicates that whole spectrum of sound properly for you to edit it. Because if you have headphones on that have absolutely no bass, when I say no bass, I'm not talking about uh, like you need to go out and get $100 headphones. You can do this on a, uh, I believe the headphones you're seeing right here, these Behringer's, the HPM 1000s, I think they're $11. You can get them on Amazon and they have um, a perfect frequency response between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Uh, so for $11, you can get a pair of headphones, and your earbuds will work fine. Um, this is going to allow you to edit. This is going to allow you to hear if someone kicked your tripod when they walked by, so you can fix that audio and take it out. You do have to bring your own every single day. I'm not going to have any for you, and if you don't have it, you're not allowed to turn up your computer and bother everyone um, with your audio editing, as mean as that sounds. Uh, you're not even going to be able to hear a good representation of what you shot. So you do need to bring a pair of headphones every single day. They can be earbuds. I'm not responsible for them. You can't leave them here. You are responsible for bringing one thing to class, okay? No, they don't need to be expensive headphones. So don't tell your parents that you need to go get an expensive pair of headphones. You need an $11 pair of Behringer's uh, or any other headphone. I prefer they be, a, if it's not an earbud, I prefer it's a closed back headphone like this one. Um, that keeps the sound in, and it can be any variation of that. If you absolutely can't get headphones, come talk to me. We'll figure something out. 
you also need to take something, uh, bring something to take notes on. And you can leave your journals here. That's fine with me. Reason why I'm big into journals is because everything we talk about, you're going to take a lot of notes in this class. This is a college style class. Um, you can keep that in one notebook. And when you leave, you can take the notebook with you. And then two years down the road, when you got a commercial gig and you're getting paid, you can open up that notebook and say, what did Mr. Castle teach me about cleaning up my audio when the wind blows? Oh, I just do this. All right, sweet. It's like a little production journal that you keep uh, full of nothing but useful information. And so I want you to fill it up with everything we talk about in class. Yes, it's going to help you pass your tests and your quizzes, but it's also going to be a journal for you uh, to take with you out into the world when you're done. So you're going to want to take that um, in your backpack or leave it here. I prefer you have a pen or pencil right with every day so you don't have to borrow. Um, can you do it digitally? Sure. Fine with me. You can fire up uh, any one of the note-taking devices on uh, our Macs, whether it's Notes or Google. You can do it in your own Google Docs. I would love to see someone that responsible um, who keeps their own Google Journal because that's backed up for you and you'll always have it. So that would be awesome. Also, you need to bring a pair of headphones every single day. Normally, we have a $15 fee, and this is what we use this money for is like a, a music subscription service. We need stock music in so much of our videos that we make. we got to pay for it. So we go to these websites, and we maybe pay a yearly subscription, and now you guys can all download their music and use it. Or uh, this helps us pay for all the batteries that we burn through. Um, it helps us pay for... Uh, Anything that we need to subscribe to or order or use in this class that we're going to use up, we use this fee for it. Now, if you're not here, I don't know if we're going to do this. You will hear from me, depending on whether we all come back or whether we stay home, if we're going to do a class fee or not. So I left this slide up to let you know we might do it. We might not. Um, depends on how the year turns out. There's a lot of uncertainty all over the place. So um, be ready, and we'll work it out. If, uh, you know, it's, it comes up on us in the middle of the year. Also, you need to bring a pair of headphones every single day. It's one other, two other expenses that you're going to need to pay. And I'm not trying to hit you with a bunch of expenses, but this is the Bechtel. And it's a really cool place um, that you can drive to. Now, if you do drive here, I need to know it's you who's parking in the parking lot. If you're going to drive your car every day. If there's a car here that does not have a parking pass, mine included, I have a parking pass on my car. It's going to get towed like that because we're trying to keep you guys as safe as possible and we don't want weird people here and weird cars that aren't supposed to be here. So uh, if you drive your own car here, you need to get a parking pass. All that information about when you have to have it by and um, whether you can pay over the internet or pay cash, that's going to come to us as school starts. So September 8th, I believe the plan now is you guys are going to be back September 8th. So usually that first week, we'll be getting you guys your parking passes. And you'll have a grace period of about a week. Um, and then after that, they'll tell your car or put a boot on it. You will also have a $10 expense for a Bechtel ID. This ID, you will scan it at the door, and it will let you in. It's got a chip in it. It's going to unlock the door so you can come into the Bechtel. Also, you need to have it on at all times so we know you're supposed to be here. Uh, you guys are used to this. Um, I, I believe it's also $10. That information will come out, and I'll get it to you as soon as possible. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Also, there's one other thing. You should bring a pair of headphones every day to class. Um, can you leave them here? No. Are you in the right place? I hope this gives you an overview of our class and kind of lets you know what we're going to be doing. This is a college level class, which means when we wrote the curriculum, we wrote it at the level of a college student for the 15 years I have been here. I have never seen a student graduate from my class, go take the first year film class at a college and learn anything new. We've covered it all. Um, we built this to be a jumpstart to your future. We built this to be an alternative to college for some people um, who want to go directly into work right after school. And that's how we've been designing this class for a very long time. So if you're not in the right place, let us know. That may clear up a seat for someone else. Um, if you are in the right place, I'm so excited to uh, go through this year with you guys. You're going to learn a lot of cool stuff, even if I don't see you much. If you're home, we got it covered. Um, you're going to be shooting at home, editing at home. 
I'm going to be writing at home, making music at home. So we've got stuff in place to keep you guys more than entertained. Also, you should bring a pair of headphones every single day to class. Um, September 8th, if you guys come to class, you should have already seen this video. If you don't have headphones, I'm going to be very sad. Possibly angry, but I'll probably start off sad. Um, other than that, if you have questions, there'll be some more introductory videos that we do and post. This is the first one. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I'm looking forward for you guys to meet Miss Lofton. She's awesome. We're going to have a good year. We're going to get through. I know it's weird, but it's going to work out. And you're going to learn a lot. So I'll see you soon.